So I would like to call to order the October 14th meeting of the District Advisory Board of the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District, known as the DAB and the NCPRD. And having called it to order, I will now turn it over to our business for this evening, and that would be with our facilitator, Chandra Emery. Thank you, Chair Parks. Um, I'm Chandra Emery. I'm here with Amy Herman, and we're from Resolution Services to facilitate this meeting. Um, I want to start by saying your voices and your time are to be honored during the next two hours, and your power and ability to influence uh, the work you're doing is to be honored. And um, your engagement in shared decision-making is important. Um, first, I wanna bring um, all the voices in the room. Um, and actually, let's see, yes. So um, I invited you through the email notice that you got um, from Jessica to take a fresh look at the ABC Code of Conduct. I took a look at it for the first time and um, something that stuck out to me was that there's a commitment in there to being sensitive to the way in which you are received by others that you might be perceived and received. Um, and so the prompt for tonight, hopefully you all are accustomed to this in, um, in our work together so far is this, um, how I hope that other DAC or DAB members experience me tonight is, and just fill in with, uh, a word that describes the quality of that experience. So it could be something like um, respected or um, curious or something like that. Um, and I'll go ahead, I think, and call on you as I think that has worked um, pretty efficiently in the past. Um, okay, so um, Chair Parks, would you be willing to go first? Uh, you just went the one word? Yeah, or something Amenable. Else like Amenable, thank you. Ben. Um, all ears. Thank you. <laughs> Grover. Committed. Thank you. And Deborah. Hopeful. Hopeful. Thank you. And Commissioner Savas. Constructive. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, by the way, calling on you in order. I see you on the screen and back up. Pardon me, Joel. To Joel. Oh, that's uh, that's all right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Open-minded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, we have with us tonight Clackamas County Attorney Stephen Madcor, um, and he's here to support your work in clarifying any legal issues that may arise. Um, he'll provide information, but will likely not engage in discussion unless I prompt it. Um, and uh, Stephen, would you like to introduce yourself and maybe speak to just that question that came up last week, which was a, about um, the, the uh, validity or um, effective, effectiveness of the current bylaws? Are those still in effect? Sure. Howdy, folks. I'm Stephen Madcor. Good to see you. The bylaws that are in effect are the ones that Scott Archer just sent me, and it says in the footer, bylaws 2015 and these bylaws will remain in effect unless superseded by an amended version or if these bylaws were entirely rescinded by the board of county commissioners neither of which has happened so the current bylaws even though they're not directly on point because i see it talks about happy valley operationally those would still be effective Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Uh, all right, so just in a few minutes, you're going to attempt to build consensus tonight on the remaining articles that are open for discussion. And those are um, number three, four, five, seven, and eight. I anticipate that you will have up to an hour and 15 minutes for this work tonight. Um, at 6.30, we will open up the meeting for public comment and allow up to 10 minutes as needed. Um, and public comment will not be reopened once it's closed. Uh, I would ask that you use the raise hand feature um, and preferably the Zoom feature. We've tested it out just moments ago and um, it, it's, 
I think it is available to everyone if you look at the, you touch on the three dots on the top right corner of your screen. And I know Commissioner Savas has been quite adept at this and then you can raise your hand. Amy and I will pay attention to that um, and try to track. Um, and um, if, you, if you are not getting to share something that you wanna share, because I am going to try to have a pretty tightly facilitated meeting tonight, um, you may use the chat function to communicate to the other panelists. Um, and Amy and I will be tracking that too and try to invite comments in as they um, are on track with the work that you're doing. Um, at 6.40, we will shift to closing the meeting and preparing for what, might, what, what I anticipate will be your final meeting um, on discussion of the bylaws. And that will be something to, to, be, to be determined in that last 20 minutes. And we end at seven. Okay. Uh, any questions about the hand raising or anything? Okay, I see Commissioner Savas. Yes. You have your hand raised. Uh, uh, two things. Um, I uh, invited uh, Mr. Madcor to join us tonight. And I thought that instead of us getting uh, every word correct and wordsmithing, that we convey the concept, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. And then I think he'll take the notes and come back with um, a well wordsmith draft for us to, to, uh, to review the following week, I suppose. So I, I'm hoping that we can use Mr. Madcor to, to that effect. So we don't have to worry as a group tonight about getting every word exactly right um, at this point and just trying to convey what it is we're trying to accomplish. Maybe with, you know, we can throw some words out there, but that's just a suggestion. That's number one. And then number two, um, at the last meeting, um, it felt awkward to do the public comment and then go back into discussion. I'm just wondering if it's more efficient for us to get the best out of that, out of 15 minutes or so, and then take the public comment in the last 15. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there for everyone's thoughts there. Um, it just seems that if, uh, if we break our work and then go back into it again, it just seems awkward not to, um, to do that. But that's, that's all up to you. But I just, again, just my thought, thank you. I, as a matter of process, I do have a strong preference for building it in and, and part of my, the purpose in that is that I can manage the time. Um, and um, I think it does provide a break between the content discussion and the time um, to allow for planning for your next meeting. Um, so I do prefer that structure, but um, does anyone, do you wanna vote on um, commissioner's proposal? Is, or is there a, a lot of energy in favor of um, leaving comment a 10 minute period at the end? I see uh, or Chair Parks. I fully believe that we should utilize the processes that you, the facilitator, have determined works best for what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. And I, I did think it felt a little bit unusual, let me put it that way. But all in all, I think it, it turned out fine. What I found that I was more uncomfortable with was going back again to public comments. So I appreciate what you had to say up front too. And if there's some really compelling reason to do that at some point in time, then I expect we'll find a way. But um, I, would, I would be fine leaving it in your hands. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other comments, then we'll, we'll move on to your, your work together tonight. I'm eager to um, support you in that. Okay, and so um, we're gonna start with article three. I do have a Google doc set up that I can do a share screen so that it, we can do some live work. If it's efficient and productive, I would like to offer that and I'll just make a judgment call about whether it's useful. I'm also aware, Commissioner Savas, that you invited, um, uh, Stephen Madcor, and so we have options and let's just try to be productive. Um, and I do see Grover, uh, yes, go ahead. Right, um, well, I have, I love that you just mentioned you have a Google Doc, because uh, I am appalled at what we were sent. We were sent a PDF with it highlighted, and when you, again, I'm sorry, I'm just a low-tech kind of guy, but trying to put it on a white and black only printer, it is unreadable to be able to mark up 
et cetera. And I'm a great fan of using Google Docs because it shows any and everyone who made changes on it and it's completely re retractable and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But what we got sent to us as a PDF is, is unacceptable. Okay, you, you have a preference for Google Docs and I'll use that at my discretion and, and hopefully it'll work out as Can you tool. share it? Um, I will, but I'm gonna use my discretion about doing that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it as a tool and I'm gonna move on now, Grover, to um, starting the meeting. Um, okay, so article three, um, you all have, I think, a copy that was provided and um, that was one that at least some of you said you wanted to discuss. Um, first, I think what I'd like to do is at the last meeting, you pro uh, I read a proposed uh, draft and you all agreed. And so now it's in writing and I'd like to just confirm that. So I'm gonna share the document with um, using share screen. Um, and let me just get into that. I think it's gonna work better than last week, my share screen, I'm optimistic, here we go. Okay, Google Doc, here we go. All right, so last week I proposed the language in 3A, I want you to put eyeballs on it and I think it reflects exactly what you voted on. Um, I'll read it out loud. Uh, the DAC shall consist of 11 members. The board of directors shall appoint all members. Members shall not be limited by race, creed, color, sex, age. Uh, sorry, I can't, let me, hold on. Heritage, national origin or income. All members must be residents of the district. A, the 11 member board representation will be as follows. Two members from city of Milwaukee, eight members who are residents of unincorporated areas within the district, one member from a district community center advisory board. And then, and then it goes on. So I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna stop the screen share for a moment and just look for raised hands. If I, I don't expect any questions on this. Okay, <laughs> but there's one, go ahead, commissioner. Well, um, so this is where um, there was a little bit, the way this section is written and, and was written, um, mm -hmm prior to editing and section seven, mm -hmm. um, I thought we would share aloud um, that what we discussed last week, that way at least, at least Mr. Madcor can um, help follow what we're trying to do here. Um, but it did have language in there about how and who appointed those people in that section three and we eliminated that. And it seems that if we, and I don't wanna to jump to section seven per se, but somewhere we need to cover that what, what we seem to have a consensus on is that the uh, uh, folks from, from Milwaukee are um, uh, selected by Milwaukee. And then the folks that are from the sub areas are selected by a sub area advisory committee if it exists. And if it does not exist, then it goes back to the structure that we had um, that we discussed in February, which is kind of outlined in section seven, even though it says, starts out with budget committee and that really needs to be cleaned up. But the, re, the, re, the appointment process needs to be identified in one of these sections. So if we agree it's gonna be section seven, great, we can move on. But um, I think there was a part there in F, 3F, that was um, also, I wanted to speak to. Okay. Uh, yes, we will go through the, those letters. Um, and so I, I saw Wilda and then Stephen. Um, yes. Yeah, I um, thank you for those comments, Commissioner Savas. I, I have a couple of just wordsmithing things in there, but also I apologize that I don't recall that we had determined that the other eight people would be appointed by a sub by people in their subgroup. Um, I don't I don't think we had had any kind of a consensus on that. I think we spent most of the time talking about who might be on the selection committee, which is in Article 7 later on, but um, I don't recall that. And for a quick couple of wordsmithing and something for us to just think about 
at secondarily is that on D, where it says the board of directors shall appoint one of its members, that's fine, except that also in Article 4, Section C, it says they may appoint. And so I just wondered if you wanted to use the same language all the time. And I, I happen to be a big um, opponent of using the word shall, and it isn't absolutely necessary. You know, so in a lot of places, I think the word may or could or whatever serves better. But, but this would be in keeping with our language later on in the document. So I just, I just wanted to point that out. Okay. But I also think that, and I, I'll leave it up to the group and up to you, Shonda. I, I don't feel there was enough discussion about alternates and how they, how they, first of all, who they would be, how they would be appointed, and and what their, what their job as an alternate would be. I mean, if their person isn't here, would they sit in? And does that mean there's not that somebody, you know, it's it's not a you know, excused absence on the other person's part or whatever. I mean, that may be getting too far down into the weeds, but I would, having been in the position of an alternate in different ways over the years, I can see pluses and minuses to both sides. So I just thought that as a group, that might be something that we need a little bit more discussion on. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So I'm going to go to Stephen and I'm, I'm going to just summarize what I've heard so far and ask Stephen to give us some guidance. Um, so first is the point that Commissioner brought up is uh, more detail about how the more specifics about how the members are selected. Second is, um, Wilda, your point about change, consistent language may and shall. And an example of that is in 3B. And then uh, third is um, perhaps more discussion on the alternates, how, who, who they would be, how they would be appointed, and the pros and cons of having that in place. It is something you approved as a um, as something you want, and Will does not, and yes, you, you did, and she's just simply asking whether there's more to be thought about with that. Um, okay, and so Stephen, would you give us some guidance um, in particular on um, the level of detail that you're hearing us um, discuss so far and, and what we should do with that? And whatever else you had your hand up. Me, um, three different versions of the bylaws and I share um, Grover's point about the one with the color saturation makes it difficult. So I applaud Chandra creating one template on Google Docs and that will be the master that everybody should work from. And when I raised my hand, I was just going to point out a couple wordsmith changes that I, when I looked at the drafts, I included it. And if we go to article three, Chandra, where you say um, membership shall not be limited by race, creed, color, I recommended that you change sex to gender. And I also recommend that you include the word religion and it says all members must be residents of the district. I think throughout the bylaws, you should use district as a proper noun and capitalize it so we know what we're talking about. So those were my wordsmithing components just for Article 3, the introductory component. And I understand, I think, Commissioner Savis's point about the appointment process because the version I have says two members from the city of Milwaukee chosen by the city one of which may be a city council purpose per person and one not elected resident and then it has an asterisk and then the other version i have the colored version doesn't include any of that um, language itself so that's a point that needs to be resolved certainly how the city goes about appointing somebody and to the point of alternates i did notice language like that in here and i guess my question to this group if you're going to have 11 people in your committee when it's fully staffed or complemented, what is the need in your estimation for having alternates? It is almost like a proxy. And for the purposes of public meetings law, proxies are not allowed because they want the person there. So is there a real, is there a necessity for, for alternates because of people failing to attend? 
Okay, thank you, Stephen. So a couple questions, and I do see you, Grover. One is I want to hold the discussion about alternates for the moment. It's an additional topic. So I've made it a note that there's some interest in talking about it. Second, is there somebody um, perhaps on staff who's catching um, some of the edits that Stephen is suggesting? I, I, um, I'm not doing that. So I wanna make sure it's getting tracked. I, I have them and I can share them with you, Chandra. Okay, great. I have them on my version here. Okay, great, thank you. And then Stephen, will you also speak to um, the level of detail we're talking about. So, um, uh, you know, I mean, there's been a couple of examples, but I'm how a, how they are selected, should that be in the bylaws? I'm a believer in less is more sometimes. The bylaws are your operating agreement of sorts. It's not necessarily, um, it's not your ordinance. It's just your internal operating procedures, how you work among yourselves. A case in point is our board of county commissioners, which is really the governing body of this group, does not have bylaws. Our board does not even have rules of board procedure. It operates absent those, basically with just Robert's rules. So bylaws should not really bog you down. You should, I think, um, give yourself wiggle room. I support May as opposed to Shaw. I support general generalities as opposed to a lot of specificity in the bylaws. And um, we have model bylaws that the variety of CPOs and hamlets and villages and other ABCs have all adopted. So um, I, I, I encourage you folks to not get high centered on some of the uh, granular minutia and just get your operating agreements done and move forward. So. Okay. Does that make sense, Chandra? It does make sense. Yeah. And, and I, I, I want to get to Grover and then maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have a chance for you to speak to a specific example as it comes up so we get some clarity on that. Uh, okay, Grover, yes, please. Yes, and I'm so glad I got to go after uh, um, uh, Stephen? Mr. Madcore because he actually pointed to the exact thing I wanted to point to when he read the different versions and the one that said Milwaukee shall point and all that. Well, that's not a version that we have a copy of. I'm glad he does, because when we discussed that very specific one, you had it on the screen is the only way I saw it. And we agreed that, well, if Milwaukee can pick their own, then the unincorporated can pick their own also. And mm -hmm. that was generally, as I understood it, what allowed us to go forward because we were otherwise hung up that Milwaukee gets one set of rules and everybody else, well, I'm sorry, you don't get to choose who your representatives are. It'll be done for you and you'll be quiet while you're, while you're waiting. So yes. that was my point I wanted to okay. make. And I yes. do want to make sure we cover alternates because I have things to say about that when it's time. Okay, so I'm making a note of the point you're bringing about consistency of, of language and treatment among the different um, representative areas. So Milwaukee versus unincorporated should be treated the same. Um, okay, and so let's see, where are we? And then, okay, commissioner, and then, um, and then I wanna try to get to where you are all in, in Article 3A and whether you're ready to move on from that. Yeah, I, I just, I just real quickly, I just wanted to say that I, I distinctly remember us having that discussion last week. And I thought that we had consensus that, just as you said, Chandra, that you know, it, it applies for Milwaukee, it should apply for the others. And, and we kind of talked about it, not exactly in those exact terms, but certainly that we would do that. And I, and I don't think from the previous discussions we've had months back that Milwaukee would, would want to have it unclear mm -hmm. um, that they um, don't have the right to select their people. Yes, okay. All right, now back to Grover's point about versions. You've been working at this for a, a long time. I think I, since you know, the summer of 2019, and there are more, there are versions out there. The one that um, uh, Jessica shared in her email is the one that we should be uh, relying on as the most recent draft. What I've got on Google Docs are portions of the text in a clean, um, a clean language for you to work through if we need it. I don't have the entire set of bylaws there, but it's um, to give you a whiteboard sort of. Um, okay, and um, all right, at this point, what I'd like you to do so that you are working through this um, efficiently, hopefully, but in a fair way, is um, think
think in terms of making proposals and you, you are doing that um, and catching the things that are high level. So I'm gonna go back to the screen and I don't see any hands, that's good. Um, and um, I wanna go through, uh, I didn't see any hands raised about 3A, so I'm gonna leave that for now. Um, and 3B, um, is there, what I guess what I wanna know is are the B, C, and D, are there any members that want to make a proposal about different language that you should consider? and see if there's consensus. Uh, okay, I see Ben. Ben, are you able to use the hand raise? It's okay if you can't, but I, I'm kind of looking at that for the blue. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, perfect. And then you went somewhere. Okay, there you are. Oh. Uh, okay, I see Ben and then Grover. Yeah, I, hearing what other people said about the alternate member, Thing, I think it's a bit sticky because all the all the 11 people go through a rigorous process to be selected and then how does an alternate get selected and is it just like I can send my sister there because or yeah what's that process like and you know with 11 people board you know there's going to be a lot of you know gelling and conversations and then to just bring a random person into the mix at any given time, um, I don't think is very, um, I don't think it's a good idea. Okay, now um, I see Stephen and I see Grover. What I'd like to do is stay on the topic of alternates for the moment um, to see if there's other comments on that. So see if you can get some consensus in what you've heard so far. Are there other co comments on alternates? Yes, I, Grover. Yes. Um, well, using an alternative that is quite similar to this is the Library District Advisory Committee, and we have alternates there. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Concord uh, Library Task Force also has alternates there. And what it provides is people who can stay abreast of it. So they're not just random people like your sister. I appreciate your concern, Ben. These are people who are also vetted in the same way. And in fact, uh, for the, I'm on the Library District Advisory Board and my alternate, um, we confer regularly and um, she commonly attends the meetings uh, as part of the mind trust to help us move forward, but it doesn't change, there's not two votes, no, 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 it's still only one vote, but it keeps people included. And given that the purpose of all of this work is to have the taxpayers who are paying for NCPRD to be included to limit the number for me doesn't seem to make sense. The only thing I'd like to suggest is I don't know, particularly if we start looking at the five subzones, Milwaukee being one of them, if each of the rep each subzone had one alternate, because the likelihood of two being missing at any given time from one place is, is significantly higher, would be a way to control the numbers significantly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then I think to Joel and Wilda and then Stephen. Uh, can me? Yes. So, okay. Sorry. Uh, I guess uh, my only comment was uh, my understanding of the alternate discussion uh, that we even had last week was, uh, and maybe I made an assumption here, but uh, the alternates would be used uh, if the existing member was either stepped away uh, officially or uh, you know, did, didn't show up for the uh, whatever amount of meetings we suggested, but they wouldn't be interchangeable with the existing member. Uh, the, the alternate would be in fact the substitute for the person. It wouldn't be that I'm gone for three weeks so my alternate steps in or three months rather and then I come back. It's I'm gone, the, the alternate takes over. Uh, and I, if that's uh, th that was my understanding, at least uh, at, at our last discussion about alternates, so. Okay, thank you. And Joel, Joel does that include the alternate voting in your place? Uh, for, for the community center? Well, yeah, for, oh. for your position, for any one given position, would that include the alternate having a vote? Well, Just I guess, uh, I, I think I, I, I would say yes. I, for example, myself, if I, you know, left, 
left the state and had to, uh, you know, vacate my spot on the CCAB, uh, the alternate would just take over my position entirely. Uh, not that I would, you know, I, I wouldn't come back in three months and, and tag them, him or her out and say, okay, I'm back. Uh, I thought it was a, would be a replacement. Uh, at least that's how I understood the alternate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. To Wilda. Yeah. <laughs> What Joel describes is one form of having alternates. There are several forms of being able to have alternates and when they speak and how they speak and what they do. Um, I, as mentioned at our last meeting, I'm per perfectly fine with not having any alternates for any of the positions, if that seems the simplest way to go. However, if we do determine to have out, um, alternates, I appreciate what Grover said a few minutes ago that having one for each sub area and and then the Milwaukee Center could, you know, or community centers, whatever, could determine if they want to have an alternate. But having the opportunity perhaps for each sub area to have one, what I would not be in support of would be the alternates having a voice at the table along with the primary representative. Um, I'll give you an example from C4, our Clackamas County Coordinating Council, that the elected people and special districts within Clackamas County meeting with the Board of County Commissioners. I currently serve as the alternate to our primary person. And when she's not there, I have the opportunity to sit at the table and, and, and have part in the conversations. But when she's there, I don't have any part in the meeting at all. No. So there are a variety of ways to deal with alternates. Um, I, would, I would not mind not having any alternates, but I, if we do have alternates, I like the idea of having one per subgroup. So thank you for that thought, Grover. And thank you, Joel. Thank you very much. Okay, um, and then to Stephen and then Commissioner Savas. Thank you. I would advise against providing for alternates in your bylaws for two reasons. Number one is your current bylaws as proposed have a, um, uh, a limitation on how many absences an individual can have and they could potentially be removed from the group, from the committee because of unexcused or unexplained or consecutive absences. Number one, number two is when the board of county commissioners or the board of directors appoints a member to this group, be it Joel or Ben um, or any other, they're appointing you. They're not appointing your sister or an unknown alternate. If the board were to appoint you and an alternate, then you could do it that way because that means the board has delegated authority to both of you. To act in that regard. It does add some complexity to your system. You have a number of members, like you're basically vesting voting rights in two people for every position. So if you have 11 folks, you're going to have potentially 22 people who could vote over the course of a year. Um, and it might add to some confusion. You would have to include that specifically in your bylaws that this is authority that's delegated to two members and you would have to present that to the board of county commissioners or the board of directors of the district when you would submit anybody's application. They would specifically have to identify somebody because currently as it stands and state law doesn't provide for proxies in public meeting law, you would need to have names and individuals confirm residency requirement, district requirements, eligibility requirements, and things like that. Again, it can be done. It has to be specified, um, but I would advise against it because of the uh, aforementioned difficulties with it. Thank you, Stephen. Will you also, while you've got the mic, um, speak to uh, if, if the question of if alternates are specified as they are in the um, screen share, um, whether the details like what Commissioner Savas brought up about how they would be selected um, and what, you know, um, whether they're a backup and so on would be in the bylaws or would it be in a separate document that sort of guides on um, the work? 
you're identifying the reasons, one of the reasons why I'm recommending against it, because you would have to specify process for the alternate. The alternate would have to be on the same playing field as a, 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 a formal member, like the alternate, the original member. The alternate would have to be identified, have to go through the vetting process, have to go through the selection of process, the approval process, um, the same exact thing as the original member would as well. So it would make the bylaws a bit more lengthy and you'd have some process that would be woven into the bylaws concerning alternates. What happens when an alternate resigns? What happens when an alternate misses three meetings? How does that alternate get uh, appointed the second time. I mean, with the group of 11, again, I question the need for alternates, but you could have an ex officio group out there that could be folks, they could be a subcommittee, but alternates of board members is a, uh, it's, it's a rarity. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then Commissioner Slavis, and then I'm, I'm wanting to move to a proposal about this topic. So, um, um, Commissioner, go ahead. Oh, you're on mute. At the risk of disagreeing with Mr. Madcor, um, in, and I think Wilda pointed out accurately um, one model in which um, alternates are frankly, I think a necessity. Um, it also works at C4 as a necessity and uh, our Metro uh, C4 Metro subcommittee as well, where we have uh, alternates. Metro MPAC, where we have alternates and also at JPAC where we have alternates. And what's unique about that and what's unique about what we're doing here at NCPRD is, is that, you know, because we engage these sub areas, because that seem to be having that geographic spread and so forth, every sub area needs to be represented. Just like, um, you know, uh, Clackamas County needs to be represented at, at, um, at JPAC. If that seat's empty and there's no alternate, then therefore, that there's no voice for Clackamas County. So I, I sit as the main representative, Chair Bernard is the alternate. If I'm absent, I call him, he steps in. If Wilda is the primary person at C4 for sit, representing C Milwaukee and she's absent, then her alternate steps in. That way the city's represented. If we, if we don't do that in kind here, um, then we run the risk of not having an alternate in that absence. So um, generally, where I have agreement with Mr. Madcor is that generally, if, if, you're, if you're all at large, let's say it's a housing committee and, every, and you have seven members and no one's really representing a particular area uh, or, a, or a specific interest called out in the bylaws like our map does, then therefore it's not necessary to have an alternate. I, I agree completely. Okay. Um, but we do have a lot of models where that's, it's, it's imperative to have by a lot of the members ha have that alternate. So I, I would advocate for at least one alternate per, per sub area, including Milwaukee. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments on this topic of alternates from the board members? I, I wanna ask a question of staff. Yes, Deborah and Joel. Um, let's see. Well, I think that the alternates have to go through the same process as anybody else and be appointed by the BCC. Um, I will make a point um, that sort of goes to, well, if, if somebody resigns or doesn't show up and we have to replace that person, then they can go through the same process. Um, typically the process for recruitment is pretty darn long because um, you have to publicize the opening. You have to um, go through what they do, a fairly rigorous process. And um, a position could be vacant for, I would say, easily six months. Thank you, Deborah. Okay, and then to Joel. Um, I guess uh, I was going to uh, Commissioner Savas's point um, about the need for alternates or where they're used. I, I think the only difference I see though with, with our board is regardless of where we're uh, selected from, uh, we're, we're not, 
I, my understanding is we're not to be advocating necessarily for that specific area that we're selected from, but rather for the district as a whole. So I understand we're all coming from different areas and I'm not trying to be naive with anything, but I, I think the spirit of the position is a little different than what you described, uh, at least as I'm understanding it. All right, so, so I'm gonna ask for Grover and then if there's one more perspective you wanna share and then I'm gonna try to bring to close this discussion on alternates. Go ahead, Grover. I appreciate your perspective, Joel, and that has always been the spoken requirement of the one district with representatives looking for all, but that is the same group that also divided the district into three zones and isolated and segregated the funding to three zones which certainly did not benefit the Southern zone, which is where many of us live. And since 80% of the population in NCPRD are in unincorporated, and there has not been any real reality as far as looking how the disbursement of funds, focus, attention, parks, et cetera, has been evenly distributed, having eyes that can see from different areas for the benefit of the entire district, but the entire district is committed to serving the entire district. And that's the part we're meeting now because it was declared by many to be not being fulfilled. So we are in the process of redesigning how the DAB functions, not living on how it has functioned and it has not fully served the entire district um, equally. Thank you, Grover. Okay, so before we try to close this topic and see um, what, what, you know, where you stand, I wonder if Scott, there's any comment from a staff perspective, and I'm particularly, it comes to mind because of what Stephen described about uh, just sort of comp complicating factors. So just if you would speak to capacity and anything there. Um. Can you, can you expound just a little bit more, Chandra? I just want to make sure I understood your question. I'm sorry. Sure, yes. And if, you, if there's nothing to share, that's okay. But I wanted to invite your perspective on what has struck me about the work I've done with this group so far is that there are, um, there are, is, are also issues of, of staff capacity in supporting the board's work. And so I wonder if the feature of having alternates has an impact on staff that you can anticipate. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps it has a little bit of an impact on staff time, I, I guess, just in just sort of generally managing, you know, we, we try to make sure that everybody's informed and, and up to speed on a regular basis. So there'd be a little bit more of that um, management. Um, I don't know if I could really say it's a, it's a great staff impact, but, but certainly any, any additional layering of, of what we're not doing now to add to the bylaw that adds anything to that workload um, would, would, would impact potentially the staff time. Um, you know, some of the discussions that we had at last week's meeting, um, we're not on this exact topic right now, but on the, on the staff capacity issue, I, I think it's just helpful to, to make sure that as we're, as we're finishing these bylaws, we're thinking of the ability to, um, to do things in an efficient way. So for example, the, um, the way that the sub areas may or may not work um, with any of those decisions, it would be important to think of, you know, if, if that means staff, whether that's NCPRD or our, our public and government affairs staff or anybody else needing to um, either help facilitate or, you know, uh, provide staff guidance at, at additional meetings every month, that would be, that would be a challenge. Um, and, you know, the, the, even just a monthly meeting, and, and I know this issue certainly has come up in the last couple of weeks is, you know, producing materials in as timely a manner as we can and turning those around to you. And we certainly want to do the best job we can on that. Um, and if, if, you know, just doing a, a really good job of that on a monthly basis is, is, is enough of a challenge. And, you know, we, we would um, effort to do that. This is an unusual circumstance to kick things out to you every week. So we, we, I think we all understand that, but the monthly work, and if we added layers to that by having subcommittees that staff would be responsible for providing uh, professional assistance or uh, providing data, materials, whatever, that would be a challenge. Um, and so I, I think we would want to be thoughtful about that as, as to what we would encumber any, any future staffing needs uh, for the district. 
Is that is that along the lines of what you're asking yes. about, Chandra? Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, Katie, you have something? Yeah, Chandra, I just wanted to add to what Scott was saying um, from a community engagement um, perspective in that we don't have a lot of advisory boards that have, uh, have um, capacity for there to be alternates. Um, but in my experience, we have had, in my work experience, we, where I've supported committees that have alternates, it can be challenging to find community volunteers who want to sit in an alternate role because it requires them to attend the meetings, to stay up to date on everything, but they don't have a role in the meeting unless the um, the the volunteer that is who's the committee member is not there and so we end up with a lot of turnover in the alternate roles and so that can increase staff capacity staff needs because then we have to go through the recruitment process more frequently than we would for um committee members not that that should sway what is best for this um you know, for this group, but I just, in speaking to staff needs and, and to the challenges of having alternates, that in my experience has been challenging to find community volunteers who for a long period of time want to sit in an alternate role. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. Sure. Okay. All right. So I'm ready to bring this to a, a, a close on this topic. I do see Commissioner, your hand. Is it necessary to, you know, I don't know, on a scale of one to five, how strong you are, but it, 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 it's just quick. Uh, okay. I, I don't think I don't I don't think anyone's suggesting that an alternate must attend every meeting. I mean that that almost that almost um, um, is contradictory to the role of the alternate. The role of mm -hmm. the alternate just attend if needed. I mean that that's typically um, that's typically what happens at C four um, and all the other examples is that all the alternates don't attend. It's nice if they attend. I mean you know, if, if, when not needed, but, but if they're needed, yes, we expect them to attend, but Chair Bernard has only attended one meeting in my behalf in, in four years as an alternate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I see Wilda pointing and I think she's saying I attend. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So at this point, it's, you know, it's 10 to six and you've, it's a really, um, I love the level of participation and all the perspectives that you're sharing. Um, and time passes and um, let's see. So uh, it, uh, there are kind of two points to this. One is, are you going to have alternates? And then if you are, the, how do you sort through the details and whether that happens as part of this bylaw amendment? Um, so, so show of hands, blue hands preferably, um, that you would like to keep in what you reached consensus on last time and that's okay, you can change your mind. Um, about having alternate, that alternate statement in the bylaws. Do you want to have alternates? Uh, Grover, you're on mute. Um, can you raise your hand if you wanna speak though? Okay, I just wanna say that we're not in agreement of what you just said, because it says here that the 11 members may also have alternate members. And the part was whether it's 11 or not, the keyword is may. As long as we understand it's may, not must, not will, and okay. it does no. not address how they're chosen, which is the big part of this conversation. It is a part of this conversation. Big and to part. take yes, and to take it in 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 parts, Grover has a proposal that the bylaws say uh, that there that there may be eleven alternates. Um, and so show of hands if you want alternates and that it would be an option. That's what it does say, by the way. Yeah. Okay. On the, thank on the you. printed copy that yes. we, they sent out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So show of hands, you would like to have alternates as an option. Okay. So, uh, and Will, your hand is not up, right? Okay. All right. So, so I'd say there's not consensus. There's not a majority um, vote right now for alternates. Um, I think it makes sense to move on from that discussion. All right, um, and I'm just deleting that from my own notes. Okay, so then I'm gonna share screen again and show you uh, the next few sections in article three and see where you wanna go from here on your discussion. So here's the share screen. All right. So So 
is to refresh your memory. Um, and I, I tell me if I'm going too fast, but it goes through G and so you've got the terms, the vacancies and the uh, attendance requirement, which you've already spoken about a little bit. I have a comment on F. Okay, so let's just see what, if, if you would all tell me which ones you have comment on, um, and I'm gonna try to see you all, hold on. I have a comment on E. Grover has a comment, okay, let me make note. E, F, others, any, just tell me the letters you have a comment on. Anyone else? You can just call them out. Okay, so, so am I correct then that B and D do not have any discussion? Is that right? And um, G. Okay, all right, so go ahead, um, Commissioner well, on. We did yes. already say that for B, shall was challenged by the, uh, uh, the by Wilda. So I, and that's not changed here. And she made it already went on record that she objected to shall there because it's not, and so even Madcore said it's not consistent. Yeah, okay. And I, well, and I, I skipped over that. So let's go back to the may shall question. Um, you got advice from Stephen about uh, using more May language. Wilda expressed a preference for it. Um, in, in favor of uh, going consistently to May language, show of hands. I see Wilda, okay, and then I'm just looking. Um, Deborah, is your hand up? If you, are you able to use the blue hand? That yeah, does how would you like us to I vote on have. this? If you could I use the, do you, are you on a computer screen? Yeah. It's all right, I can see your hand, but it's the three dots on the top right. And then if you go down, right, you'll no, see a raised hand. I don't hand. have three dots on the top right. Okay, that's all right, I'll watch for your hand. Okay, so let's do the vote again. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the vote. The, the, the specific, the, the, the specific the, the, the question is, the question, was, the question was, shall we use the word may, may instead of shall. Shall yeah. throughout the Thank document? You. And I don't, I don't think that's a wise decision because I think there's time. Okay, then Commissioner, if you would just hold, I just want to take a vote right now. So, um, so, so you're uh, clarifying the question you're speaking of is for the entire document or not? Why don't you make yeah. the proposal that, that you want to make, Grover? You'd like to consistently use may, is that correct? Okay, no. then go ahead and say, make it as a proposal what you'd like the group to consider. If you put the screen back up on B, it says mm -hmm. shall, and that was the specific one that uh, Wilda talked about. She didn't mm -hmm. think it should be shall. And then mm -hmm. Stephen Madcore said that later on, or you said whenever that it's may somewhere else. So mm -hmm. for that particular item, mm -hmm. shall is inappropriate and it's already been discussed. Okay, so I wanna steer away from changing each place where it says may or shall. What I intended was to get more of a global uh, sense of whether this board would has a preference for May language, unless you uh, want to call something out as a shell. That was that was my intent. Um, if if I may, Shonda, yes, please. I'm, I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt you. I'm sorry, but okay. I wanted to be sure that my hand was up to pose a question or clarification to your to the to the message. In most places where the word shall has been used, May suits just as good, but I'm mm -hmm. concerned if we say throughout the entire document without looking at each of those instances that there may be something where it does need to say shall. I mean, I don't okay. know of any of those offhand, right. but generally I prefer that we use the word may. And, and the reason that caught my attention on this particular one is because later on in the bylaws under article four, Article 4C, it does say may, and so I just felt we needed to be consistent, which mm -hmm. Mr. Madker has mentioned to us also. And again, yeah. back to what I said last week, bylaws should be as simple as possible and should be our, our operating system, our fundamentals, it should not be our everything. So, yes. Yeah. And, and, and I think what Stephen had said is that, uh, I think he's taking notes of these comments and will um, can can attend to those details, um, like the may and shall. I don't think, I'm gonna steer you away from going through each may and shall in this document tonight, okay? Um, Stephen, did you have a comment on yeah. the may shall? Let somebody else do that, the mays and shalls. Yes. 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 Just, 
Yeah, just real quick to echo what the Chair Parks just said. For example, though, a shall is appropriate in Article 3, where it says that the board shall consist of 11 members. Mm -hmm. The board of directors shall appoint those members. That is definitive. Your membership will be appointed by the board of directors. That is a shall. Let's go, lo, go to the one we're talking about though. B, the board of directors shall appoint one of its members as a non-voting liaison to the DAC. That speaks, well, what happens if the board doesn't? This bylaw can't force the board of county commissioners to do anything. So that's why that one should be a may. There might be future boards that do not want to appoint a liaison to this group. May is consistent with that appointment process because it continues with the um, sub E where it says the city of Milwaukee may choose to reappoint their designees for both. So you don't wanna have this advisory board directing the appointing authorities how to do things. You want the appointing authorities to appoint the members and then have it be incumbent upon them to do their work and not dictate up, but to work collater uh, laterally and not upwards. Yes, thank you. All right, and I, it's on my mind that you have an expert in the room from the county tonight that will likely not be at future meetings. That's on my mind as I'm managing the time. So just want you to know that um, that's a factor. Okay. Um, okay, so commissioner, you had a comment on E or F and then Grover, you had a comment on E or F. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really wondering if you wanna put that back up there. Sure. Um, happy to. If that, if that section F number one needs to be there. F. Um, uh, so basically um, F, vacancies are filled in this. Well, actually, I, I take that back. Um, vacancies are filled in the same manner as the original appointments. I, I don't know if that section needs to be the original appointments um, in the same manner as the original appointments, because if we're changing the method of which we're appointing people and we have different methods of which that happens, it seems having instruction that it just be the same manner. Um, if Mr. Madcore wants to suggest May here, that's, that's uh, I, I could live with that, but, but I, I don't think it shall be certain that it be the same manner, especially if the sub area advisory committees exist. And let's say that a person's appointed by the process and then the sub area forms, then that, that position cannot be reappointed in the same manner or should be appointed in the same manner. So I think that is needs to be eliminated. That that's that section. So you vacancies, take, are, okay. vacancies are filled um, for the unexpired term of the vacant position and strike that other language. Okay. So and I'm just right in this whiteboard. So go ahead and tell me what you think your proposal, what you want it to say, and, and we'll Just vote on it. That it would say vacancies are filled uh, um, for the unexpired term of a vacant position. Okay, so I'm striking out everything in blue for your proposal. Okay, um, let's take one or two com comments on this and then see if you have consensus or where you want to go with uh, commissioners proposal. I'm going to stop the share so I can see. So uh, support for Commissioner Savas's proposal to strike that language that you just saw. I can put it up again, but I want to see hands. Okay, I see one, two, three, four. Okay. And uh, Deborah, was your hand up? Um, could you restate that, please? I sure can. Um, so I'm going to show the screen and I, and I could do this as a red line if that helps, but I struck out the, uh, the some phrases and just, now it says vacancies are filled for the unexpired term. So I took out um, the a, qualifying language. I have a question about that. Does, okay. Can I, can I ask my question? Sure. Does thing. that assume that the vacancies are filled by the process in state and not just filled in general? the process that's already set forward? It, it, would, be, it would be the, the mechanism that we design here tonight. Ideally. Sure. Okay, yeah, that, okay, that answers me. Okay, uh, and Wilda has a comment. 
Yeah, and the did you take out the balance of that statement that had to do with alternates filling in there? Because that was that was part of that. The earlier discussion. Yeah, just well, just now that particular we're talking about F, right? It says um, then the alternate will be designated to fill. We're not using alternates, so that part of the sentence would go away. Okay, uh, that sounds correct to me. Any objection to taking that out because of the vote you already had? Okay. Oops, hold on. If somebody's tracking all these changes and we don't quite get them here, I'm sure you guys will yeah. collaborate and we'll get Okay, them. I, th I think we're good with that. And so, um, so back to commission, let's vote on commissioners Savas's proposal to take out that language. I see one, two, three votes in favor and then Joel Depp. Okay, so you're all good with that change. Thank you, commissioner. And I am trusting that someone is tracking this. I think Stephen and perhaps, perhaps Ellen, is she on here? Oh yeah, the boat. Okay, good. Um, okay, good. And then now to E, Grover. Yes, you have a comment on E? Uh, I actually really don't um, because okay. I just want to clarify that we are in agreement that the city of Milwaukee uh, can choose to reappoint their designees. And since we were talking about equal for equal, that means the other sub areas potentially can reappoint their sub and it goes on to say that, but that all reoccurring four-year terms require the board of director approval. So we're not sneaking it by them, but who the candidates are, we were, at, earlier in this conversation, we had some consensus that we're gonna treat all the sub areas the same. And that includes Milwaukee as a sub area. And then there's four other sub areas. So I just wanna be clear, we're on that same page there as opposed to let that slip by because this clearly says Milwaukee may and you're, choose to reappoint their designees and that okay. means both because it says plural designees that means that both the person that has typically been served by somebody from their council but not required to be and that typically would be the person serving on their parks board but that's what they decide they may appoint them and they may reappoint the uh, reappoint however the sub areas need to have that same. And then of course it still has to be approved by the board of directors. Okay, board so so, um, so Grover, will you, will you take that last sentence and tell me what you would propose to change it to achieve your objective? And I'll go ahead and type it in here and then y'all can vote or discuss. Go well, ahead. then I wouldn't distinguish that it's the city of Milwaukee. It would be all sub areas. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, the city of Milwaukee has special privileges, and we are trying to be egalitarian, I think is the right word. Okay. I, I have a technical question. And Shonda, when, when you're typing in new language, could you italicize it so that we can easily I, see? I sure can. And I actually am wondering if I should just do the markup feature. Would that help? Well, just some way to... Yeah, let me do that. It won't it won't be too messy. And that way you all can see I'm a little nervous about you not tracking what I'm doing. So let me see if I can just change this to but everybody could see the italicization. How do you say that word? Oh, it, I don't know. <laughs> but okay, let me see if I can. I've now turned on my um, markup feature. So um, let me just Can you back up. Yeah, I'm backing up. And now I'm going to do um, what Grover suggested was all sub areas. And then I'm gonna strike. So all sub areas may choose, and I don't know, hopefully this helps you, Deborah, um, may choose. That's the proposed change. Um, and I'm gonna try to see you all. And then you also have to take out and alternate positions out of there. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, so both the primary, okay, so even both the primary, right? So designees all the way through positions. Is that right? Is that right, Wilda? Or others? Yes, in my estimation, it is. Yes, that looks right to me. Designees or submit. Okay, so that last sentence of sub E 
uh, who's your level of support for Grover's proposal, please? I I do have another question for clarification, if I may. Okay. Yes, sure. So it the way it's written right now, it says they may choose to reappoint or submit new representatives, board of directors. I'm making an assumption that every time there's a reappointment, that it still goes to the board of county commissioner, the district board. Would that be correct? This uh, doesn't sound like that. Okay. For, well, it, so if chance. you want to, yeah, if you want to make that clear, can you can you propose language that would make that clear, and I'll add it in. Well, it does say all reoccurring four-year terms require. So yeah, even if they're reappointing, approval. Yeah. right. So it, I think it does think cover that, it. Yeah. Okay. Great question. Great question. Okay. Good. Okay. And I think Ben, are you raising your hand? Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm curious. I mean, obviously, there's um, official members of the city of Milwaukee that can appoint, and I. I totally understand the equity of having the sub areas appoint their um, representatives, and but how, who? Because a lot of the sub areas don't have uh, CPOs. How do we establish who in those sub areas can choose to reappoint? Is it the? I don't get it. I can, think can that comes along understand? with further conversation. I don't think we've gotten to that point yet because we've got to talk about that separately, I think. Okay. Okay. Now, Ben, would you say that's a detail to be worked out or is it is it necessary to clarify that in your view to, to vote on this uh, sentence change? I think it's a detail. I think I could live with a detail that would be worked out. Yeah. Okay. That sounds right to me too. Um, and then commissioner, I see your hand. I was going to answer Ben's question. We can save it for later. Okay, thank you. And then I see Scott. My turn? Yes. Sorry. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, so well, before we move on to voting or coming to an agreement on, on Section E here, um, there still is something that's an inconsistency, which is the, the seven representatives of the district zones um, I think we struck that in the in the the draft that we sent around, but it's not it's not stricken here. Which is mm. we changed it instead of saying any number. Which it, actually it sh technically that should be eight if there's a number because we now have eight. But um, I think that's the language that carried over from the former minutes. Uh, but I think we we proposed a I, I don't know if it was staff or the or the group that um, proposed this last time, but we proposed something where we just struck most of that sentence and just said the representatives appointed under subsections A.1 above may serve a maximum, et cetera, et cetera. So okay. somehow I'm, we need to eliminate the seven representatives inconsistent with the number on the board. I, I'm, yes, thank you, Scott. I'm gonna correct this based on my, I have a hard copy because you're right, the redlining didn't come through. So let me do that. Um, so it says the representatives goes to here. And then uh, I don't know, appointed under subsection AF. OK, so I think that's what I need to strike. Is that right, Scott, to match with the current draft? That's correct. OK. All right. And, and can we go to the vote at this point? Is that, or was there more? Were you asking that of me, Chandra? I'm yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. did I, I, no, did that I, was it. I just, no, okay. I just wanted to make sure that that was cleared up before a mm -hmm. vote happened. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, now I'm going to stop the share screen so we can vote and I can see you all. All right, so uh, support, level of support for the proposed language you just saw. I can put it up again if you like. Um, and I'm looking for blue hands. Uh, okay, or not blue hands. Okay, good, good. Uh huh. So it looks like you've got 
One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six. Okay, good. So that passes. That that will you'll go forward on that one. All right. Um, and at this point, I'm going to put this back up on the screen so we can see where we are. Um, and Wilda, by the way, you were the one that suggested the real time, and I know that can be a little daunting because maybe it means we get into the weeds. But I do so appreciate you inspiring me to figure out a way to do it. Um, Okay, now, um, am I correct that we're, we're done with section Article 3? Is there anything else in Article 3 that we haven't talked about? So HI, um, Wilda, is your hand up or no? Okay, all right. Okay, good. So Article 3 is completed. Um, did you make the correction in F? I, I just couldn't see it. You didn't have it on the sure, screen. Sure, let me look. Um, About alternates. Oh, we, we noted it and, and I think, I believe Stephen and maybe Ellen are all, both tracking. So those will get captured. Um, and this this is not an official, this is for illustration. So you, you can um, put your eyeballs on it. Okay. Um, all right, so now the next article that you uh, would go to for discussion is uh, four. So let's do that. And I just note the time is uh, almost 6.15. We've got about 15 minutes. And I, I wonder, I'm thinking about really um, making sure that the advice um, that's gonna be useful guidance from Stephen is um, we really take advantage of that tonight. Um, so uh, let me, I think I'm a little tempted to go to subcommittee to article seven and see if he would weigh in on that. Because I think that's another one that um, there's a lot of thought about. I see Wilda nodding. Do you have a sense of that? Would that be a um, reasonable thing to do because Steven's here? It seems more substantive than some of the other areas at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, I think getting your guidance, Stephen, on that would probably uh, your fingers going like this. What does that mean, Grover? You're muted. And I Deborah's see hand is up. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, you must be pointing to her. She must be over there in your world. Okay. Deborah. Um, are we skipping through all of Article 4? Because okay. I have a question about something in Article 4. Thank you. We are not going to skip it, but we are going to go out of order because okay. Stephen is with us tonight and we we're short on time and I would like him to guide you on Article 7. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to Article 7, I'm going to um, put that up on the screen. And Stephen, have you had a chance to look over Article 7? I did. Okay, great. Would you um, give us some guidance on, you know, just the content of this and, and how it fits in bylaws, the level of detail. It's not uncommon to have bylaws provide for the appointment of subcommittees from time to time. They don't necessarily identify them in such detail. It looks like this is a budget subcommittee and a nominating subcommittee. Um, and you certainly could do that. And those rules could be made up as those subcommittees are formed and appointed as well. But it, it could be less language or it could be the language that you have here as well. I'm not entirely sure of the level of involvement a subcommittee would have in budget. I could certainly see their value with a nominating committee. They would be out there recruiting for alternates and other folks mm -hmm. like that. But it's, I mean, you, you could accomplish this task just by including language that says that the district advisory committee may create subcommittees as required to promote the purposes and objectives of this committee from time to time and leave it as that and allow future committees the latitude to form subcommittees for the purposes that they like. This seems to limit it to budget committee and um, the nominating committee. Okay, yeah, that's really useful, thank you. Okay, co comments or questions for Stephen on the points he's making about Article 7? 
Go ahead, uh, Commissioner. I have a comment. So, um, and I think, unfortunately, Mr. Madcor is reading that like it's written, and that's why there's there's an error there. So it's it's not it's supposed to be, well, the language towards the bottom, Stephen, um, about the nomination process. That's where we inadvertently put the appoint appointment uh, interview applicant process, and so it's not meant to be under subcommittees it's actually the appointment process for the members of the DAB DAC so um, the title and where we put that if you think that's the appropriate place for the appointment process where it says nominations and so on great but you're right if you read it that way it looks like it's simply under budget committee and or other committees and it's not meant to be that Will does you have help? your hand up yeah, I just I just wanted to say that I think that um, Mr. Madker's note about keeping it simple and just saying we could appoint subcommittees as needed at various times and whatever might suffice. And that if we, like Commissioner Sava said, if we have something about what a selection committee would look like or how, what they would consider or whatever, then that needs to be in a separate place. <laughs> And where would that separate place be? Maybe Stephen, if it's not in the bylaws, where would it be? In terms I, I, of your subcommittee? Yeah, like a selection committee. No, 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 for, for, for the membership of the DAC, where would it be? Okay. For the membership of the district advisory committee, which is this group right here? Correct. That would be in your bylaws. Right, where in the bylaws? Are you suggesting under the subcommittee that this subcommittee is the one that appoints members of the district advisory committee? Is that what this says? Well, the, the bottom part. Um, so if you look at the very bottom of that, un unfortunately, I wish we I wish we had the original version. This is this is where it gets confusing. So um, I'm going to scroll down here on my my version. So you see where it's in red there. Well, you, you can't because you're not looking at the same copy. So where it starts, where it starts off saying um, a nomination subcommittee, that that's that's the language we came up with in February. It's not meant to be subcommittee. It's not meant to be budget subcommittee. It's it's basically nomination subcommittee. How people are appointed to the DAC. And I believe also since there is a separate budget committee for this for this special district that the words earlier on in one of the other areas where it says that we would pass on any budget information to the budget committee suffices. I think, I thought we had agreed on that, that that sufficed as far as budget committee was concerned and that there's would not need to be a separate budget, budget subcommittee that came out of the DAB. So I think that should have been stricken a while ago if I'm remembering process correctly. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna, what I'd like to do, and let's see, I see, I see you Grover, just give me a moment. Um, I would like to uh, have the group consider this, uh, Stephen's suggestion of that general language, and I started to write it down the DAC may create subcommittees, et cetera. So um, let's just see where you are on that. And yes, let's just see where you are. And then, and then you'll have a few minutes hopefully to discuss, but um, I'm gonna go to my whiteboard. Sure gonna try and see, give me a second here. Um, just give me one moment, I gotta get the whiteboard up. Okay, and then I'm going to share it. But Stephen, will you repeat what you said? I want to put that language up and see um, if what what the level of support for it is. Sure, it would be the district advisory committee may from time to time create committees as. Oh, one second, I got to type. Okay, the what's happening here? The district or DAC? Uh huh. Thank you. The DAC, yes. May from time to time. Create committees as required to promote the purposes and objectives of the DAC 
and then period, a chairperson for each committee shall be selected by the DAC chairperson. That would give this group the flexibility to appoint any type of subcommittee that they wanted. And it wouldn't be limited to just selection or budget. It would be for a whole variety of purposes. Okay. All right. Uh, um, we're, uh, we will, I just want to be mind, I just want to be mindful of the time and just to, for you to notice, you have about 10 minutes before we go to public comment and then we're really going to shift to what you do at your next meeting and so on. Um, so maybe time for one or two comments and I'd like to see what the level of support is for what uh, uh, Stephen is recommending. So Grover, go ahead. I, I heartily endorse what he says. However, I also want to take what Commissioner Savas had to say, and we need to move how, because it is so part, it's, it's almost like a subset of the whole constitution here, how are members chosen? That's not a subcommittee. That means to be moved up to section three, article three, the comments that are here that address how members are selected, period. Okay. And the part that we've discussed in further conversation here is we've determined that a member represents approximately 10,000 people. So that's yeah. something else that has never been identified. All right, so that's kind of, I'm, I'm making a note of that as, as something you wanna make sure is preserved for discussion mm -hmm. and consideration. And I go to Commissioner Savas on uh, comments on the proposed language from Stephen. Commissioner? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm okay with the language, but we moved to section seven, not to talk about subcommittees. We moved to section seven to talk about how we get people, as Grover just kind of said, and, and basically that language is under A, parentheses, nomination subcommittee. That language right there with, with uh, one, two, and three, um, that the, the paragraph and, and, the, and the section below that mm -hmm. is why we went to seven in the first place. Okay, uh, understood. Members to the committee. I'm okay with the language mm -hmm. that, that, that is in there under subcommittees, but that's not why we came to section seven in the first place. Okay, understood. So, so what we're going to do at this point is show level of support for what uh, Stephen has suggested, and then I, I am um, then, and then Grover and Commissioner are raising a topic that will most likely be where we start um, next week. Um, and that is about the, the selection process, okay? And what, what of that goes in the bylaws? Um, and so I wanna allow time for a vote before 6.30, but also hear from Wilda and I think Grover. Do you still have, a, do you have another comment? Yeah, oh, I just ahead, put Wilda. my hand up to vote. Um, ah, okay. I like that, okay. County attorney. Okay, all right. Any other comments before we go to vote? Commissioner, your, low, your hand was up, but is that from before? Okay. All right. Good. So um, I'm going to put it back up on the screen and will you, or do you need it on the screen? Let's try it without. If anyone needs it, I'll put it back up. So um, level of support for the language that I've just written up from Stephen as Deborah, one, two, three, four. I'm looking for Joel. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. It looks like it passes. Am I correct about that? Okay. All right. As long as we're clear, that was only about subcommittees, not about the issue of choosing members. That's all. We are clear. Yes, understood. Okay. All right. Um, so, so in. Can I ask a question. Yeah. Did I hear from Grover what it is that folks would like for choosing members, and maybe we can try to craft something that would address your concerns. What what what's the uh, what's what's the issue? I'd like to yield to Commissioner Savas first, and then I'll follow him. Okay, and what I'd like to do with that, because of time, it's a great question, is, um, let's see, um, I, we don't have enough time to allow for others to, to, to weigh in on what Stephen's asking for, but is there a way, Stephen, where we could get that in, have that as part of the discussion and then pitch it to you even outside of this meeting? Can that happen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do it that way then. Um, and it could happen as a, in the course of the next meeting and then we pitch it to you as a result of that, okay? Sure. Um, okay, great. Now, I, I want in just these few minutes before we go to comment to see if 
um, I don't know, Stephen, in looking at the articles, are there any other parts that jump out at you that you want to um, give us some guidance on? Not really. It was just minor um, grammatical, a few form components. Okay. I would get rid of, you have terms like partner cities in there. Those are holdovers from your earlier ones. You only have one city as a member now. So I would clean it up. And if I had a version, I would offer those uh, revisions to that. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we have a few minutes before we shift. And so I tempted to go back to um, article, where are we, four or five? There, there's a, I, we, I have a lot under four. So if you wanna, if you wanna open that up, um, that's great. Uh, I wanna see if there's anything quick. So if you have a lot, I'd say, let's move it that one to the next meeting, but I'm gonna just scroll through the screen and see so we've got five and eight, and then certainly seven. So four and seven, we will put to the next meeting. Let's look at eight. Who has comments on eight that I wanna see how, what the, you know, how much energy and interest is there in that? Let me, on amend, amending the bylaws. Can I see a show of hands? Who has an interest in discussing that just to get a feel for how to make time for it? Could Raise you put a hand, if, what's that? I just want to read it again. Oh, sure. Sure thing. I got halfway down it before you. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with it as it is, frankly. All right. Has everyone had a chance now to read it? I'm going to put it off for a moment so I can see you. No one's saying, okay, so, and then raise your hand if that is a, a article that you want to discuss or are you good with what it says? More discussion? I'm not seeing anyone. Okay, so we will leave, so article eight is also um, finished. Okay, um, and let's see, so that, did we cover, where are we? We've done three, eight, so you've got Am I right that you've got four, five, and seven left? We did seven. We did seven. Oh, which, yes. What you've got to do is the nominating committee, and that gets moved back to three. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So there's more on three potentially. And then how about article five? Doesn't that follow required law for open meetings? So, okay. So is that that one seems, one that I caught that it, we didn't need to? I'm not sure. Okay. So you have a fun. shell. If you put that back up, you have a shell in there, and I just wondered if there might be times where maybe um, that we don't meet at a, you know at once a month. Maybe it's Thanksgiving, or maybe uh, there's a forest fire, or something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a so, good guess, Paul. It should be. It should be. It can, maybe our attorney has some ideas and they can work on that. Listen, okay. like they do other committees, you know, that the goal is to meet once a month. But um, if, uh, you know, if there's no business pending or if so many people agree or something, it could, it could not be held because, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So it sounds like there's not much more on five, just maybe a May changing one worry, we can handle that. Okay. Um, all right, at this point, may we turn uh, to public comment for t and allow for 10 minutes if needed. Okay, and Katie, are you assisting with that or is Ellen not sure who's letting people in? I'm happy to do it. Thank you very much. It is now time for public comments. Um, the public will have, um, I believe we've been giving three minutes to speak. Ed Parks, excuse me, can yes. I check out? Pardon me? Can I check out? Oh, okay, but Thank we'll miss you. Lights are off. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, Stephen. very much for being yeah. here, Stephen. 
Thank you. So that means we can't go back to any substantive stuff. <laughs> well, we don't plan to tonight anyhow. <laughs> so um, members of the public who have any comments about tonight or about other business of the DAB are invited to let us know by um, Katie, do you want to tell them what process it would be? And will you be our timer also, Katie? Sure. Um, we offered, Chandra, we're offering the opportunity to, to make your comment via chat or by raising your hand and I will invite you to speak. So you'll see in the lower portion of your screen, either the chat or the raise your hand uh, feature. If you're on some Apple devices, it may be in the top of your screen. So we wanna invite any attendees to provide their comment in chat or raise their hand to speak. Is there anybody out there that would like to make any comments? Yeah, and Katie, while we're waiting to see if anyone does in fact raise their hand or use chat, um, has there been any email correspondence? Okay, thank you. I did not much. receive any. All right, thank you. Sure. Okay, and are you seeing any raised hands? I don't see any raised hands and no one has entered anything in chat. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. We do appreciate the people that are here as attendees and thank you for continuing to do that. And we will now turn the meeting back over to our facilitator, Chandra Emery. Thank you, Coach or, uh, Chair Parks. Um, all right, okay. And so um, I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna turn to the next article um, and allow for some discussion and we'll go till about 10 till, and then I wanna switch to um, closing. Um, so article four, right? Well, I, I, this is this is what I didn't want. If we just dismiss the attorney, I think it would, it was. Uh, I, I think it's important to have the attorney follow our our thoughts yeah. and incorporate that. So this is this is what I try to raise at the beginning of the meeting. I don't, I don't want to burn up and waste 15, 30 minutes, but we just have, and we also dismiss the attorney. So um, yeah. All right. Um, and on the bright side, we have 30 minutes and you all have been working really well. And I think Stephen has said he would, um, you know, be available to help with uh, advice if needed. So I think, I think we can still be productive. Um, okay, so going to article four. Am I correct? I don't know, Amy, help me out. Is it, am I, I'm a little cross-eyed. So is that, is that right? Four is, it's four, five, four and seven are left. Yes. And the selection process. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, seven, seven is the one we finished. Right. Seven is subcommittees or no subcommittees. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. so three and four really. Okay. So let's look at not four. We haven't, you haven't talked about that yet. So, um, give you a chance to read it. I, I'm going to try to make it a little smaller so that you can see it. Um, let's see. Oh, zoom out. Hold on. All right. So I think that's, those are the sections. And if you can't see it, please tell me. Okay, I'm going to stop share for a moment. Is everyone, is there anyone who needs more time to read? I can, I'll, I'll put it back up as needed. Um, okay, so, um, so what are, what are, who has comments they'd like to share on this article? I see Commissioner and Deborah and Grover. So how about Deborah, if you would start? Um, the, the 
point that I wanted to um, discuss is when it says that the um, chairperson shall continue to serve until a successor is elected or appointed to that office. And my question would be, who would appoint that person? Um, should I would think it would just be a successor is elected. Okay. All right. So you're you would propose that you take out or appointed because yes. it's not clear how that would happen. Yes. Um, and then I think it was commissioner and then um, Are you ready for my comment? I think so. I was trying to remember who else had a comment. It was okay, Grover. <laughs> okay, yes, please. Okay, uh, uh, well, several years ago, um, legal counsel's office and uh, public and government affairs director at the time, Gary Schmidt, who's now the administrator, was instructed by the Board of County Commissioners to streamline as many bylaws as possible as they came up. And so to get a lot of these things consistent. So um, a lot of this would what would be changed to somewhat align with our typical ABCs, advisory boards and commissions. And so what's unique about this language in A, for example, um, there is no chairperson that has general supervisory or directional powers over the DAC. So that's a pretty strong um, chair model that, that I, I don't think is consistent with what that streamlining is. Um, there needs to be um, some clear language that the uh, chair is elected. I believe somewhere there was or there is, but if it needs to be further clarified under A or wherever that the chair and the vice chair are, you know, elected and, you know, annually and rotate annually um, at typically, um, not, it's not a shell, but may, but, but that it is elected by the board by the board of the DAC in this case, that the DAC selects their person. That's how we've done it at the DAB. Now we're calling it the DAC. Um, the terms of office, um, like it says one year, that's pretty typical. But uh, uh, at least on A, that whole paragraph needs to be more aligned with what we you know, have typically strive to do in the county. Okay. Other comments and Gro Grover? Doke. So yes, I concur with what uh, Commissioner Savas said. I wouldn't have said it the same way, but the part about it makes reference to that if unable to serve, the chair will appoint a representative among the DAC members, whereas we're dumping the vice chair. What we've found to be very effective in, uh, again, I know it's not the same, but it's the same concept. The 12 libraries each send representatives to the Library District Advisory Committee and you have a chair and a vice chair. And same with the task force. So I clearly see the need for having a chair and a vice chair um, be part of it. And so we would eliminate all that that they would appoint. It would clearly fall to the vice chair in the absence of the chair. And I also believe it's important, again, based on other experience in other community groups here in Clackamas County, having the agenda being jointly um, worked through with the staff, the chair and the vice chair. So we have um, a broader input, particularly when we're looking that eight of the 11 members are gonna be from the previously underrepresented parts of unincorporated Clackamas County. And I do believe they need to have that kind of representation in agenda planning. And the last thing is according to what Commissioner Savage says you just read farther down, that's where his selection of officers is covered. It's just below item C, but anyway. Okay, uh, so Grover, when you said agenda planning, were you suggesting there should be language about agenda planning in article four? Uh, where do we have the duty? I'm, I'm agreeing with what uh, Commissioner Savage said and getting mm -hmm. in specifics because mm -hmm. having general supervisory and directional powers over the DAC. Um, I got no problem with presiding, but it is so who sets the agenda and who works out those details? 
And I don't know that it shows up anywhere else in you. Okay. Um, and I'm used to, again, another group that I'm part of here in Clackamas County. We mm -hmm. actually, at the beginning of the meeting, mm -hmm. the agenda is set and then the group has to accept the agenda. Okay. Are you proposing that that be something that be addressed in these bylaws? I don't think it has to be there. I think that could okay. be something that the DAC, uh, when properly seated mm -hmm. uh, and caught up to speed and educated, would be able to address that, given that the bylaws can be changed at any time with advance notice of one meeting. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. Um, try to capture some. And then will the, you see, I but see you need that. to take out the or unable if or if unable down here in the middle of A. It says, or if unable to serve the role, we'll appoint a representative. You know, we're putting back in Wait. the item Wait. about vice chair. Okay, I mean, will you just hold that because I want to go to Wilda. Go ahead, Wilda. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would, I concur with what Commissioner Savas has noted. And if there's language that is general and basic that other committees, other ABCs are using, then I would, I would certainly think that we should look at that mm -hmm. um, before we try to wordsmith this mm -hmm. and i agree that it should be the chair presides over blah 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 and i agree that it should be taken out they appoint somebody else because that's why we should have a vice chair mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. so that that person can take the place of the chair when the chair is not able to be there and as grover pointed out it does say further down it's not a numerical number but after the very um i it's hard for me to see it with the dark green here, but it does say that the officer shall be elected by the DAC membership by simple majority and when they'll be and whatever. And as for the, the agenda, that's already covered in A. So I think just adding under vice chair responsibilities that, um, that they may assist with the development of the agenda. I, I think the, the other point that I just want to make, just to make sure it's on, you know, everybody's minds. Um, I appreciate that Grover suggested that, you know, there are some committees where they, uh, you know, they accept the agenda as they meet, but I'm not sure under open meeting law, if we have the ability to do that. Under open meeting law, our agenda is what we have published prior to our meeting. And we are not, supposed to veer from what has been published publicly. Um, we can amend an agenda up to 24 hours ahead of time, but again, making sure we get the amended agenda out to our general public, if I understand correctly, it's something like that anyhow, so. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna stop share just to check in with you all. Are there any other comments? And I've taken notes um, so that I can kind of make a proposal about how to address this section from this point. Any other comments on article five at this point? Well, if, 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 you, if you have, a, if we have agreement on striking that one sentence by all of us, let's just strike it now and get it behind us. Um, will you repeat what sentence you're talking sure, about? Put it, put it back up and I'll read it sure. verbatim. So yeah. the first sentence after the word chairperson, the chairperson shall have general supervisory and directional powers over the DAC strike the, no, strike the above, no, the other one, the first this sentence. One? Uh -huh. yeah. Strike that entire sentence. So that will, I, I think that is what um, Chair Parks was agreeing with. And um, I was trying to say, and I think Grover kind of agreed as well, if the rest of the membership agrees. And again, um, I, I, I think, <clears throat> you know, the goal has been to get all of our uh, bylaws relatively streamlined as, as reasonably as possible. And that would be much closer to what we, what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So there's a proposal to strike that first sentence. I can put it up if you like, if you're, if you, um, let's see if, if there, how much support there is for it. There's more to do on this, but uh, I see Joel Grover. Calling for a vote? Oh, I'm sorry, Deborah. I'm uh, yes, I'm calling for a, a vote on the proposal that Commissioner Slavis just made to strike the first sentence. It's here in green. 
you are supportive of that. I just want to put it up to make sure. To strike the sentence that's marked out in green. Okay. And I'm seeing, thank you for keeping your hands up. Yes, I'm seeing that you all are supporting and that passes. Okay. All right. So what I'd, I'd like to propose for this article is um, that, because I, and I guess let's check this out too. I want to see the level of support for taking some of the comments you just made and um, asking Stephen to propose language for this article based on what's commonly um, used in the county for other, uh, other organizations. Grover, go ahead. Just want to clarify that you are including in that that we're putting the vice chair back in, and in which case the chair would not be appointing someone to represent them if they're not there, which was in that same A that you stopped. Is yeah. That what I'm saying? Okay, good. Yeah. What, I, that what includes I, that stuff. Mm -hmm. What okay. I'm proposing is yes, that I would include that point and then and then defer to him to make a suggestion whether, you know, so it's a consideration for sure. Yes. Okay. So support but, and, for, yeah. And if I may say too, mm -hmm. so for some of us, it may seem weird or not necessary or whatever that secretary is in there, but that's important, especially when you're you know, open meeting laws. And it's a staff person who serves as our secretary. We don't appoint a secretary. Okay. But the other, many of the other committees of the BCC, you know, um, have similar kinds of positions. Okay. So. Yeah, I made a note of that. Okay. All right. So level of support for that process. Take these notes, pass them to Stephen, ask him to propose language for Article 5, and then you can vote on it hopefully next week. Okay, I see everyone. Paul, you're okay. Yep, thank you, Deborah. Okay, so that passes. That's what will happen with um, Article 5. Now I want to turn to closing the meeting uh, just for a few minutes before we turn it over to Chair Parks to address what's needed. I do see you, Grover, and hopefully you'll get a chance in a second as we plan for next time. This is a time to um, make requests of staff. And I really want to honor that staff has to decide whether they have capacity to meet the request. So, so that's one. And um, to check in with you about what I think is going to happen at the next meeting is that hopefully you'll consider uh, Article 5 as presented by Stephen Madcor, and then you will address the article, potentially Article 3 portion of the selection process. That will be the bulk of the discussion next time. Um, so that's what I'm expecting based on what you've discussed so far. Any other comments or questions and requests of staff or each other? Go ahead, Grover. Yeah, and that's actually mine. I started at the beginning. I really wish that we can get something that's a workable document sent to us as opposed to a PDF that's blocked out. I mean, we can't change history. We can't make it different. Yeah. So I, I would like it that Google Docs would be fine with me. Some people don't know how to use it. If we just did uh, Word with track changes, but get the highlights out of there because that makes it too hard to read and we can have it as a word document so we can we won't change it the way it is in the world we can change it on our own screen to make edits to talk about yeah you'd like a more a document you could work with okay yes, all right so any before staff answers are there other requests of staff or comments for next meeting go ahead commissioner yeah well i'm gonna make the same one uh that we discussed last time and that is that we've started this meeting uh with two different three different um bylaw documents again. Um, so I would like to stay with one document. I, I've been flipping from one document to another document all night. And okay. I did my homework based on the document that was sent in the packet. And that's not the, that's not the document we used. All right. And um, okay. So I want to go back to that, but I also want to see if there are other comments or questions, any other topic, any other requests or comments? Okay, so will you clarify, Commissioner, what you mean by multiple versions? There, you relied on the version that was emailed from Jessica from staff. Well, that's, what that's, are the, that's the one that staff sent, but that's not what we really yes. use tonight. What do you mean by that? Do you mean because of the Google Doc? Or do you mean something else? Well, yeah, well, the fact that what was highlighted, what wasn't highlighted, and, and the notes that were part of that, we're not in the Google Doc. Okay, so I want to clarify because that's that's me, and so I want to be really clear that um, I was attempting to use the Google Doc as a whiteboard for crafting. It was not intended to replace the document you referred to. We can work. I think what what the important thing about what you're saying is 
you and Grover are saying we want one version. And if we're working in a Google Doc, you would like it to be exactly the same as what you get before the meeting in an email. Does that work? Well, yeah, and, and I think last week, I'm pretty sure that I, mm -hmm. I referenced what we had done in December, January, and February, where yeah. staff had, we had someone who was basically the scribe, if you will. We had a live screen, we had a working document that evolved, and we mm -hmm. used that document meeting after meeting after meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's what I was, that's what I referenced last week. Mm -hmm. It worked great, and we all were able to come to the meeting prepared. Yes. All right, so what I would propose, and let's see, and I'm willing to work with staff on this, is that we uh, create a current version of the bylaws in Google Docs for purposes of this meeting, a complete document. I think we need to coordinate that, and I'm willing to help with that, but I don't know, Scott, do you think that's realistic given your time constraints, and, or is there something else you would propose? Well, I, I like the idea. I think we you know, the, the point is just to have a, a consistent document that we're all looking at. So um, I think, I think Chandra, if you're able to, to coordinate that so that there, that's just coming from one source, that would be preferred. As far as how quickly we can turn everything around, I, I, I just would like to address that, that I know there've been some discussion and some emails and different things. Um, what I see again for the, for the next meeting and, and unless we can Unless we can do something, you know, in, in then by tomorrow midday, um, is we'll put out an agenda because we need to post the agenda by Thursday. That we that's kind of our standing um, procedure is post an agenda for any meeting the week prior on the third by Thursday end of business, and then we will between now and Monday, um, we would be working internally as staff to to pull together all the questions and the in the documents that you've requested, including I think. You know, Chandra, um, putting one one version of the document, uh, the bylaw document, together for for sending out in whatever format by Monday uh, afternoon or evening. And I know that's only two days before your meeting next week, but I, I it's just hard to it's hard for us to turn it in one in one day with trying to pull everything together. So, does that answer your question, Chandra? And is there any other questions from me about that? I think I'm clear. Um, and then, yeah, go ahead, Grover. I just wanted to clarify because I didn't quite understand how Scott, uh, we, we want to have the, the materials that we worked on up through February, which were in the Word document that was the basis that was sent out to us, but not in a PDF form and not with highlights on it, but it still had the notes, which most of this did as well. So that's fine, but that's not in Google Docs. So if you're gonna to move to Google Docs and you wanna do the work to do that, Chandra, that's on you, but I want you to get all the notes over there as well and the track history that was done in the other. I'm not asking you to do that. That's what you're offering to do. Okay, I'm, I'm not willing to do what Grover, you're asking me to do. And I, I, I don't know if that's what everyone needs. I, I don't I think I can. I didn't ask you to do it. You volunteered okay. to do it. I don't want you to do it. We wanna use the okay. same document that we had before, just not have it be a, frozen yeah. in PDF. Right. Okay. So I think, um, I, you know, we can just, we can decide on the, oh, go ahead, Wilda. I'm sorry. I hate to sound like I'm confused, but I have to admit okay. that I guess I am. Mm -hmm. um, I was under the impression that what we want at this point is what has been decided, what still needs to be decided what were those decisions that were made so that what the bylaws that we get, we can somehow segment out. I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out how to enhance that, do it, whatever. Maybe it's italicize it instead of trying to color it if the coloring doesn't work. But I, I, I'm not sure why there's reference of going back to the documents that we received in February or March, because many of those are the issues that have been changed since then. Those are the things that we've worked through all these last few months and gotten to the point where we are today, where we've only got a couple more sections that we really need to look at that are substantive. So I'm, I, I'm, that's what I would like to see is what have we done? What still needs to happen and somehow differentiate between those two. 
Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we'll leave it there because I think staff understands what you're asking for. I will do what I can to support staff in generating that. And, um, you know, and um, I think we are clear on what you want. Um, any, oh, go ahead, Amy. Well, I just wanted to say Stephen also is working on this. And my impression of what you're trying to do is create a clean and final copy that's as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of history that you know, you've accumulated a lot of drafts and a lot of detail about conversation or decisions that have been made in the past, sim similar to what Lilda just said. But the goal is to get the bylaws uh, into a form that's that's pretty simple. So um, whatever <clears throat> way you want to get there is up to you. But Stephen's going to also be working on this. So yeah. um, we'll see. We'll see what we can pull together for next week. Yeah, and I, if I may, I would also recommend that in some way you know what issue of the bylaws this is. So by a date or by whatever, but you know, we can't, we can't, I mean, I don't think at this point we want to go back and go iteration 14, iteration 13, 12, whatever, forget all that. But right now at this time and place, if we say, according to our meeting on, what are we, October 14th, 2020, here are the bylaws as they would exist if they were adopted. And here's the areas where you need to work on. Thank you. Okay. All right, and Ben's given a thumbs up for that. That's good, okay. Um, and Deborah, all right. Um, all right, so may I turn it over? I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut myself off because of my noise, but to, Chair Park, so that you can close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you once again, Chandra, for taking us through some really um, difficult questions and getting to a resolution and concurrence, you know, by, by this group. Um, a, a reminder to everyone that the next meeting will not start until 6.30 in the evening. And I, once again, certainly appreciate that you're giving me that extra time before that so that I can fulfill another commitment that I have. And um, maybe it'll give you all a chance to, you know, eat a little bit of dinner beforehand or visit with your families or whatever. So let's look on the bright side of that. Um, so I thank you all for being here this evening. And I look forward to getting the information that staff's going to put together for us. And I would like to um, have assurance as much as possible that Mr. Madker will be with us again at our next meeting. It was really important to have him here this evening. I think for all of us, we appreciated what he had to say and his place in that. So Scott, is there anything under director reports or other business that you want to bring to us tonight? No, okay. thank you. And next week, can we talk about your next steps? Sure. Okay. All right. We'll save that till then. Ben, you have your hand up? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to let you all know an evening meeting for my work came up for next Wednesday, so I will not be present. But given the momentum of the group today, I'm quite uh, confident that you guys will plow through and finish the work without me. So. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us know that. If anything changes and you find that you can be with us, even if it's you know, for parts of it, um, please do try to do that. I think it's with only six of us, it's really important that we have as much as we can. So thank you for letting us know that. Appreciate it. So, okay, with that, I will adjourn tonight's meeting or I'll take a, I don't think I need a motion to adjourn. I think we can just adjourn the meeting. So until next week, you guys have a great week in between everybody. Thank you. Okay.